All right, take one. Hey, beautiful people, what's going on? Another theory working on here. I have a, another video on YouTube about this topic also. I was fooling around with that. Maybe this thing was used to uh, twist fine thread like um, this lobe disc, fine thread like silk. But anyways, yeah, you know, the more and more I looked at it, we got into some uh, conversations over the uh, years, and I'm, I'm thinking uh, uh, there's something else going on, you know? Anyways, the Schist Disc, a.k.a. Egyptian Trilobe Disc. Evidence, evidence, is, excuse me, evidence is leading me to believe that this disc was used in a still to separate or concentrate a material that was used in ancient Egypt. And I believe the word chemistry, chemet chemistry, uh, they were, they were, uh, that's what they called Egypt, you know, land of chemistry or chemistry. Anyways, uh, Egyptians were known in ancient world as experts in many applied chemistry fields, such as metallurgy, wine, beer, making, uh, glass, glass makers, paper manufacturers, paint pigments, dyes, cotton. I mean, they made everything. You, you can read this, stop the video and read it, but it goes on and on. They, uh. They were into, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of uh, different types of ores, uh, copper and gold. The, the Egyptians developed uh, writing on papyrus, um, you know, as early as 3000 BC. The actual, uh, the article described an overview of the various chemical activities that took place in ancient Egypt, beyond everything. These, these people are way out in the front row here. We had everybody else on the uh, plan. Well, the Chinese were uh, doing some amazing things back then too. But uh, here's uh, Sabu, right? He's buried here now. Um, he's got um, you know a lot of uh, a lot of like jars, you know, stone vessels, uh, flint, you know, more flint, stone vessels, animal bones. Now, animal bones. So we get into is. Um, they use that in a lot of the uh, smelting process. They it uh, they make acids out of it. It's used for um, all sorts of different things, and uh, we'll get into that a little later. But you know, he had some copper copper implements there. There's a trilobe disc, the uh, the device in uh, that we're talking about right now. Uh, pottery, you know, pretty pretty. I mean, for the most part, he's he's got a lot of vessels, a lot of. Um, you know, bowls, a lot of flint, and flint's used to, you know, uh, work the bone and turn it into a powder, okay? So, I mean, this guy was definitely a chemist, and he, he had a lot of um, containers for whatever he was making. He could, uh, you know, jar these things and sell them on the market, maybe for the pharaohs, the queens. It could be anything from makeup, perfume, uh, you know, uh, maybe refining cognac, uh, you know, wine. Uh, who knows, right? But I'm, I'm going to get into um, what this disc uh, will do in a certain application. Here's the uh, top view and a side view of it. And, the, and the, the lobes actually come in pretty close to even with the uh, little little pipe that sticks out in the center. Here it is in the Egyptian Museum. I was there a few years ago. It's just about even, you know. Um, it's stone, it's not perfectly round, but this type of thing, this type of stone can deal with acid. So if he was making acid or something toxic, um, you know, corrosive, um, you know, in the acid region, the pH, uh, either, either uh, uh, what do you call it, alkaline or uh, the acid region, uh, this thing would definitely take it. It would, it would stand the test of time. There's another picture of it. So, um, as you know, you know, you watch my videos, they just come up with some uh, concepts and ideas. Sometimes they take off. Uh, you know, if you think this is worthy, share it. Send it to a friend. Uh, you know, keep it, keep it going, and uh, we'll see what happens, you know. But uh, here, it is, uh, here it is again. Um, these are alchemists, you know, guys doing uh, chemistry back in the day. And, you know, they obviously had the heat, you bring up your product. You cool it with the water here, and you know, drain it out in, into a uh, a vase, or just like an uh, you know alcohol still, right? 
It's like an alcohol spill right here, so we have some liquid. And uh, I'm, I'm surmising that the uh, trilobe disc was up in this area of a still. Not this design, but you follow what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, tense steam, and I think the steam just went up and out of it. Um, you know, there's some real, real old things here. But obviously, you have to have a heat source. You have to have your, your liquid, whatever you're trying to uh, concentrate, refine into a, uh, you know, a more concentrated product. <clears throat> this is a um, artist rendition I made of kind of what I think was going on. It's a real simplified process, but you have a pan in here. Now this is, you, this is how you make uh, dis distilled water at home today on the stove, right? You have a pan, you have a, a, a you know, a deep pan here. You have a pan that sits inside this. You have a water level on the outside of this pan, and then you boil the boil the uh, you know put the heat source in. You boil the water. It goes up, and it hits the uh, lid, right, and it drips back down. And obviously, steam is is pure water. It's pure H two O, otherwise uh, distilled water. And that's how distilled water is made. You have to have steam. It goes up. Hits hits a uh, it's a top lid, condenses, drops back down, and inside this pan, the inner pan, that's where the distilled water is being uh, uh, captured. Okay, so it could be as simple as he was making, uh, Sabu was making distilled water, which you need for a lot of uh, process in the uh, chemistry world too. So, again, here's the uh, trilobe disc, and here's a, um, this is a typical, if you wanted to make distilled water at your house, you get the big pan, you put, you know, throw a couple inches of water in it, put this little pan inside, and then you turn this disc upside down and throw some ice on it, okay? And then you boil the water, uh, put the heat source in, this boils up, it condenses, and it'll condense on the, uh, on the pipe, on the handle rather, and drop back down into this pan. And you'll have pure distilled water. So if you didn't learn anything at all in this video, at least you know how to make distilled water at home. You need to. Here's a uh, kind of like a the process has already gone gone on, and this in here is uh, distilled water, and the uh, other water is tap water or you know river water or whatever. So you have the pure water that dripped down into the inner pan. So that's what I'm thinking that the schist disc was involved in some kind of chemistry. Uh, you know, distilling, refining, uh, filtering process. Okay, so we'll get, I'll get into a little bit more of the operations of it. So here's another uh, kind of like a dry thing put on the stove. There's no water in here yet, but you get the idea. Um, this is just a typical still. Uh, today, you, you know, making alcohol or whatever you want to do. You get the, you know, a cooling water cooling supply. You're boiling off whatever it is that you're trying to, uh, um, you know, make, and then it goes up. And you know, this is actually making distilled water, so you got the heating element, water drain, and it's pretty simplistic. And uh, you know, it's just a process that goes on today. So we get into uh, what we found at uh, Sabu's little uh, burial place, and uh, bone ash. It was uh, ox bones. Okay, so he's, he's using ox bones. Uh, to make bone ash. So his bone ash is a uh, white material produced by calcination of bones. Uh, he had a lot of flint there so he could grind the bones down into a nice fine powder, powder mix it up. Maybe he was mixing it up with the distilled water or, or making an acid of some, some um, you know, type of material. And, uh, you know, uh, you get the, uh, the exact composition of these compounds varies depending upon the type of bones used. But general, the formula for bone ash is CA5. We can get in, you know, you can read this. Over here, they use it for uh, metal casting, right, which was big in Egypt. Gold, uh, copper, silver, things of that nature. Bone ash is used for foundries. It takes a real high amount of heat. So, um, you know, you could uh, get your, uh, uh, you know, material for the high temperature and then pour it in. You could also, you also use it for uh, separating out um, impurities and like you know pulling the gold and silver out of uh, uh, ore. So uh, bone ash is used in foundries for various purposes. 
Examples include release agents and protective barriers for tools exposed to molten metal and sealants uh, applied as a powder or water slurry. Bone ash has many unique characteristics. First of all, the powder has high thermal stability. So you guys can read this on, on your own time, but um, I'm trying to keep this down to 20 minutes. But anyway, long story short, you know, he's, if you look at his burial site, he was definitely, uh, you know, with that that's what you would use. I mean, that you'd use that today. You need a shot material and bone, you know, if you wanted to do it by hand. Bone ash is a uh, white material produced by calcination bone. I think that's a double. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same one. All right. So let's see. I'll go back. Uh, we got a little bit of time here. So just just nail it one more time. So um, the uh, trilobe disc would fit over something like this. You know, just a pot, right? You have your product in there. And I'm saying it's distilled water. It could be anything uh, or, but the uh, it would the, it would boil up. It would hit the disc, right? The discs are up there. You know, they're going to be cold colder than down here, and you wouldn't. What's good is where the trilobes are, where the lobes come down. The three lobes. It's open to atmosphere, so you're not building up pressure, right? So you, you definitely don't want to be dealing with pressure this that age that that span of time. What you could actually do on top of this to control, you know, the loss of uh, water or material that you're boiling off, trying to concentrate, you just throw like a piece of leather across the top, right? You just cut it right over the top of the uh, trilobe disc and you can adjust it. You could have holes in it and just move it around uh, or, or just, you know, you can build up a little bit of pressure or you can adjust the, uh, the steam off rate uh, and still keep it from uh, building pressure inside the pot. So these are cooler. Obviously, this is cooler. This tube right here, it could have been a uh, stand that actually, you know, another piece of pipe that went here that's that actually sat inside the material that you were actually making. Uh, just like there's a structural element, or it could have been something else that came off. You could add a tube. You could make a tube up out of leather or whatever, you know, uh, wood, stone. I mean, they were doing all sorts of stuff out there in Egypt. They just about have everything. So. Wouldn't surprise me if they could, you know, have something to come down and, and uh, hit some cool water and, and distill the uh, product that you're vaporizing. But it, but for now, I'm just saying it's a uh, just some kind of a separating apparatus for caustic material or a process where there's heat. And that's why you got stone. You got the stone lobe disc. It can take heat. It can take acid, and you can use it over and over again. And you're going to get your uh, your product, whatever you're making. Whether it's eye mascara, perfume, medicines. But this guy was, along with being buried with uh, stone and and, and uh, bone, he was he, in his site. He had lots of small little jars, um, you know, stone jars, um, ivory jars. So that would be something that you would you'd make your product and you would put your product in these jars, cap it, bring it to market, and people would come in and buy it. So. All right, hope I drove something home here. Um, as usual, I'm outside the box doing my thing. And uh, if you got any comments, bang them, bang them out. Tell me what you think. And uh, this, you, you just check out everything he's got. The, the guy was the uh, the corner pharmacist. He was the apothecary. You know, was, you, this is where you went, and you know he made he made the product for you. So um, he was the chemist. The uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, town chemist. So let's, let's see. All right, so we're done there. I'll bounce through this one more time. Back here, John Shaughnessy here at your service. And uh, here's a couple of my websites. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Pretty simple. I mean, I could have dragged it out and bored you all to death and made a 10-hour documentary out of it. But, uh, you know, I just like to get to the point and move on. Uh, all my stuff's copyrighted, so if you guys want to, uh, you know, you can share it, do whatever you want. If you stop making money on it, you got to send me a couple of bucks. All right? <laughs> all right, peace out, people. Stay safe.